and Naima Latif with the Media Connection and we are here at Betty Shabazz International Charter School where free COVID care is performing testing of students, faculty, and parents for the COVID virus. It's been really challenging for students adjusting to an atmosphere where they can't hug their friends, they have to worry about safety and distancing. And it's been adjustment, a very serious adjustment for the teachers and parents trying to help them understand the issues of keeping us all safe. So I'm here with Miss Lawadia Johnson who has been working a long time with children and now is helping them understand some of the changes that must be made as a result of the coronavirus. So, Mama Luwadia. Hey, Mama, how you doing? Good, good. We thank you so much for giving us some information today. It's my pleasure. So, Tell us a bit about your, your background in terms of a teacher and, and you know, your years of working with students here at Betty Shabazz. Sure, so uh, I'm Mama Lawadia Johnson and I'm actually the, oper the Senior Operations Manager for our campus here on Ellis and our other campus, our Barbara Sizemore Academy campus on 65th and Stewart. Um, I started off with uh, Betty Shabazz and the National Charter Schools in ninth no, 2007 um, at our high school, Gustavo Leadership Academy. Um, as the office manager, and, you know, throughout the years, I have um, progressed up. So uh, I've been here roughly, what's that, 13 years now? <laughs> mm. Yes. So um, uh, right now, like I said, I'm in the capacity as the senior operations manager, and um, we are welcoming our students back into the school building um, effective Monday, April 12th. We had a pilot program with a company um, called Education Solutions where we actually had students in the building effective March 8th. So we've had students learning uh, in person um, with their teachers remotely in the building. And it has been a challenge for some of the students to get reacclimated back to school life. And I think the biggest challenge was uh, for the students just to not to be able to hug and touch each other like they normally will. But they were very excited to return back to school and see some of their friends. And uh, the other challenge is, you know, we would keep the students in their own separate hubs. So they weren't necessarily able to socialize in large gatherings, but they were able to socialize within their own little hub or pod, so to speak. So the students seem to love it still. They were able to be around friends and just to come back into the school building, they was they were so excited just just to pull up. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's the most the, that's the best thing, their excitement. And just to see the joy in their eyes is it's just it just makes you happy. So, you know, we were glad we were able to get students back and now we're work welcoming more students in on the twelfth. So we are preparing for that right now with the COVID testing so that we can make sure that everyone entering in will be, um, will know status, know their status. They'll know their status and, you know, we want everyone to be safe. Mm. So what has been the process of helping younger children understand the safety issues mm. regarding the virus? So for the younger children, believe it or not, they are very receptive. So um, I know that parents and um, our learning uh, coach staff, for the students that have been in school um, already, um, they would go over, you know, different protocols and rules and um, how to interact with their peers and so forth. And then also, um, We've had uh, numerous com conversations uh, with parents, you know, to just to give them an overview of, 
what the expectations are for returning in this environment. You know, while it's a return to school, it's not the same type of return to school that they were once used to. So we just have to be a little bit, uh, how to say, uh, a little bit safer mm -hmm. and not, we can still be social, but not as social as before. Now there are certain symptoms that we know to look for. Usually when a child is sick, you know, runny nose or cough or cold, it's kind of like, okay, they got a cold, not a big deal. But now right. we have to be concerned. So what is the procedure if a child may come in and maybe have a slight beat or maybe cough a little bit, if you don't know what it is, what, what is the procedure going to be for that? Great question. So for us, when a student, um, Enters, we have um, a B6 COVID-19 screener that parents must complete prior to the student even coming into the school building. So we have a person that would check the screener to make sure that student's uh, name is listed there. And then when a student uh, arrives, um, they would check and make sure all the answers are, I would say, appropriate so that they were, were granted access meaning that the questions on the screener, which is a typical screener, ask about, you know, if you have any coughing, sneezing, um, headaches, the same symptom, the, the symptoms of COVID um, as any other type of screener. So um, if, they, if the answers are all appropriate and they're granted access, then they can enter into the building. Once they come in, the students get hand sanitizer, uh, at one of our many hand sanitizing stations, um, but we have one at the door, and their temperature is taken. So temperature is uh, monitored heavily here at the, in the learning hub. We actually take temperature twice a day, and not just the once upon entering. So they get a temperature check upon entering. So if that temperature check is um, above um, 100, then at that point, they, they, they cannot uh, enter. So even at, if it's over, if it's over 99, you know, we want to, we, we inform the parent that this is what the temperature was. And then sometimes we may have to just do it again, um, you know, a little bit later. And um, if that temperature is still the same, 99, or if it spikes, parent is immediately called for them to pick the student up. Mm. Yes. So we want to take every safety precaution seriously um, because we just don't know because COVID is a viral infection and temperatures usually is the first indicator that there's some type of viral infection going on. So if a child has a temperature, how long do they stay out before they are allowed to come back? How, how long will they be asked to So at wait? that point, once um, a student is um, if, there, if there is a temperature and the student cannot come into the building or if they were already in the building and they have a temperature or show any symptoms of COVID during the school day, our contact tracer, uh, Dr. Washington, she is immediately notified and then she begins her process with the parent and the follow-up. Um, and then she would let the uh, learning hubs know if any additional follow-up is needed so that could it could possibly mean you know depending on what the contact tracer um, the evidence shows a hub could be um, shut down or not but we have to await her approval to move forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so during that time that the child is away they will be involved in in remote learning correct Correct. So the students are still doing remote learning with their teacher online. Um, it's just that they're in the school environment, so just to get them reacclimated back to school life. It's, 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 it's as best as possible, you know, to try to be as normal as possible, whatever normal means nowadays. <laughs> we have a new normal. <laughs> right. Right. But they are they are doing remote learning, and they receive assistance um, in the classroom with their learning coach throughout the day. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate all you're doing. Now we're going to talk to some of our... It's my pleasure. Absolutely. So... 
we'll be talking later to some of our testers that are in the building preparing for those who will come in and of course get tested so that they can participate in this school experience on the campus of Betty Shabazz International Charter School. We're here at 78th and Ellis and of course Betty Shabazz International Charter Schools has two campuses and both are participating in this process of keeping our students safe. I'm Naima Latif with the Media Connection. We'll be back.